I want to share with you something that is not new. Uh, maybe for those of you who are here with us for the first time or those of you who are coming again, um, this may sound new. But uh, for those of us who've been here at the church, this is nothing particularly new. But I want to refresh and remind our mind today of what really Christian life is all about. The first thing that we see in this verse is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will come on you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and then you will get power. But first comes the Holy Spirit. I think last year was a year where a lot of us, it was a fresh, like a revelation, fresh insight that the Holy Spirit is not a dove, a wind, fire or oil. But the Holy Spirit, first of all, is a person. When that reality begins to fall inside of our heart that He is a person, it creates a possibility for a relationship. Until there is an understanding that He is a person, you cannot have a relationship with someone you keep referring to as it. You cannot have a relationship with someone you keep calling it. We were, we were at the camp in Minnesota and at the last day, and I have the clip, I just don't feel like playing right now. Where at the end, all of the youth got up and they started to share of what they learned from the camp. Almost half of one thing that they were mentioning is that what they've learned is how Holy Spirit is a person. And most of these youth speak in tongues. Most of these youth grew up and they know how the moment prayer hits to pray very loud and to pray very loud in tongues and even when most of them would share this is what they would say and I've learned that uh, the Holy Spirit and they would keep calling him it until a few times I would stop by and say you didn't learn anything bro. I'm like you need to change the way you refer to the Holy Spirit because Jesus went to heaven and he said instead of Jesus he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us and the, Jesus never referred to Holy Spirit as it. That means until our mind gets an upgrade and a renewal that he is not it, our relationship with him is not possible. And when it's not possible something happens. The Bible says in Galatians, walk in the Holy Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That means as I have relationship not just with someone in heaven but with someone here on earth, the Holy Spirit. This gives me a power to not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now a side note, the Bible doesn't say if you walk in the Holy Spirit you will not have lust of the flesh. Many people think if I develop relationship with Holy Spirit, I will never want to do anything bad. I will never be tempted. I will never be in com compromising situations. Nothing bad will ever happen to me. My lust of the flesh will be gone with. But it's not what the Bible says. The Bible says when I walk in the Holy Spirit, means when I develop a relationship with Holy Spirit, when the lust comes and knocks on the door, the Holy Spirit gives me courage not to answer it. I'm tempted but not sinned. Can somebody say amen? amen? But how can I walk with someone I keep calling it? How can I walk with someone that I treat no differently? And I treat my vehicle and I treat the vending machine or the way I treat every other object at my disposal. When the Holy Spirit is not a person in your mind you will treat him as it. Either you will seek to control him or you will be completely distant from him. And I think last year was very clear and I want us to remind us of that again. That the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit came on this earth to us. And the Holy Spirit is a person you and I can have relationship with. It's not the presence of the Holy Spirit that guarantees your success. It's your relationship with him. Inside of you, you have two kind of things. First one is your flesh. Your flesh is what Satan gave you when you got born. It's, it's his birthday gift. 
It's a sign of appreciation for showing up on this earth. <laughs> and he's not getting thanks for it, right? No. Because flesh is the reason why you do stupid. Flesh, if you thought flesh is some uh, fancy word for, for being smart, no. It's a fancy word for being no good. It's a fancy word for being... <whistles> and all of us have it. Flesh, it's the carnal nature. It's the things in us that wants to do bad. But it's interesting, there is people who have flesh. You know, Hitler had the same flesh as you did. He did a lot of damage with that flesh. Mother Teresa had the same flesh as Hitler did. What was the difference? Did Mother Teresa's flesh was better? Christian flesh? When you get saved, the Bible never says God gives an upgrade for your flesh. Your flesh still is flesh. That's why Christians can do some unbelievable things. Because Bible says all things are possible to those who believe. <laughs> your flesh is still flesh. Have you noticed that? Even when, after you gave your life to Jesus, you have not recognized that the flesh is still there? And it did not get Christian? But when you get, become a Christian, God gives you a gift. And this gift is He gives you the Holy Spirit. So within you, you have two, the flesh or the Holy Spirit. A life of victory does not depend on having the Holy Spirit. It depends on yielding to the Holy Spirit. And life of sin does not come from having flesh. It comes from yielding to your flesh. And I want us to understand this on the level of our subconscious. Having the Holy Spirit does not guarantee you will have a powerful life. Having the Holy Spirit does not guarantee you will see miracles in your life. You have a chance for it. Just like having a wife does not mean you have a happy marriage. Just because you have a wife, that does not guarantee happiness. For some, trouble. The presence of a person does not guarantee a relationship. You all have parents in your house. That does not mean you have a relationship with them that is good. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. A people can have the Holy Spirit but if we don't understand first of all that He is a person, we don't even have a chance to know Him as a person. For many people the Holy Spirit has been reduced to speaking in other tongues. Those of you who are coming new and maybe you got saved in our church and this is completely maybe a new phenomenon or manifestation to you and you're you know watching when people pray in tongues and you're like ah, this is this is interesting, different, doesn't sound like Russian, this is definitely not Spanish, it's something else and these people just keep going at it, keep going at it and you're like awesome. Let me tell you what this is. The Bible talks about the gift of tongues where God gives it to us. It's our prayer language. The Holy Spirit fills us. We yield to Him. He takes over our, our mouth and not, we don't become manipulated. We don't become, He doesn't drive us. It's still, we're still conscious and we still control it. And those words, they mean a whole lot to God. They worship God and they connect with God. Many times there were stories when somebody would speak in other tongues that the other person in the church will understand that in some other language like French, Spanish or something else. It's like it happened in the Bible. And for many people this has become a catalyst experience with the Holy Spirit. If I get the tongues, that's it. That means I have the Holy Spirit and some people even begin to refer to Holy Spirit as tongues. I remember hearing one testimony actually right here when a young lady returned from Mexico trip and she said my Holy Spirit learned few new words. And I was like, which spirit are you talking about? Because the Holy Spirit does not learn new words. You mean that the gift of tongues, you now have few other words, syllables that you didn't have before. That is completely different from actually the Holy Spirit as a person. A gift is something He gives. But God didn't just give us the gift, He gave us the giver. Can somebody say amen? You know, a few weeks ago I've, it's become my tradition. I overcome my prejudice against people with signs, help me. Um, you know, I used to drive by and see somebody with a sign, you know, I'm a veteran or something. And I just always kind of like, ah, they're making it up. And, and lately I've been just kind of realizing it's up to them. I just salute them for having the boldness of having a sign <laughs> in the cold. <laughs> Even if I would be in need, I probably would never have the audacity to stand with a sign. And I remember I would have, you know, a few, few dollars. If I would have a few dollars, I would always just kind of 
find somebody and just give it to them just bless them even if they're making it up god bless them maybe those few dollars will change their life i don't know but imagine you standing with the sign and some like me drives by and i give you money i give you a gift with that gift you received something very precious it might last for a day a year or two but that gift did not give you a relationship with me amen I'm very fortunate to have a, a young man who sit who sits in the first row today who's a marine Nufo his daughter is here today actually also I don't know what I'm not gonna call you up you're all good <laughs> when I was gone uh, Nufo actually uh, bought a, a very big TV 65 inch TV uh, for my house well it's because so all of you can watch comment we can watch videos YouTube videos and Prophet TV Joshua and it's a very <laughs> very very big very very big tv and it's a very expensive tv now the difference between me giving something to someone on the street and nufo is this is that when i receive the gift from nufo i have a relationship with nufo and this gift will only strengthen that relationship because now nufo has another reason to come to my house <laughs> i'm giving some of your hints how to get more welcomes <laughs> i'm just kidding and so and now Nufo has it's, it's a different because there is a relationship and this fosters a deeper relationship a closer relationship where he feels that home is almost almost kind of like hey I can drive by and say hi because that my gift is there the speaking of tongues doesn't create a relationship with Holy Spirit but it gives us an opportunity to have a deeper relationship if we choose to amen and I want us to understand that today that even spiritual gifts other gifts that don't necessarily mean that a person has a relationship some people have gifts of speaking some people have gifts of this and that but it does not necessarily mean they have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and it's most important for us this year to get to know God who's here all of us fantasize to get to know God who left not God who came we read about we write movies about God who and, and please understand when I say left I don't necessarily mean his presence is everywhere but when Jesus said that I am leaving the earth but someone else is coming every revival where miracles happened every revival Holy Spirit was recognized there's there's meetings church religious meetings where a lot of people but supernatural aspect is completely gone and if you will track it down it has a lot of morals it has talented leaders and speakers supernatural things don't happen without one being the Holy Spirit Jesus didn't do one miracle without the Holy Spirit nor will you nor will I Jesus everything he did was because of the Holy Spirit and if we are to live similar life it has to be the person of the Holy Spirit has to be at least acknowledged respected and honored when you recognize he is a person you begin to recognize another person for example if you are driving in a car let's say you're going to a Seattle I remember last Wednesday we were driving uh, after the service and a wonderful young man Bogdan took me to Seattle um, and I was very tired and I was actually sleeping half and on but because a person who was driving me was a person even when I would wake up and I am tired and I needed to catch my sleep I would still try to have some kind of a conversation letting him know I recognize he is behind the wheel now imagine that's fine if you don't talk to someone for three hours but imagine not talking to someone for three years for years someone who is behind the wheel in our world today holds the galaxies in his own hands he is the reason you can take a next breath he is the reason both of your knees will hold your weight when you get up he is behind the wheel and many times we fantasize about a spare tire in the trunk instead of at least recognizing and sometimes saying Holy Spirit I need you Holy Spirit I love you Holy Spirit help me many people talk about him but not to him directly many people pray to God 
Holy, uh, Father send the Holy Spirit now realizing he is right here beside you and the Bible doesn't say to pray to Holy Spirit though he is God and we can pray to him but the Bible says to fellowship means like you talk to someone in the car you can fellowship with him you can talk to him